Yo, what is up, everyone? My name is Chuck Cross from NASCAR on MDK. Welcome back to the episode of Inside the Lines. We do have a good episode for you guys, ladies and gentlemen, and also a very heartwarming uh, episode for you guys. Obviously, our big story revolves around Ryan Newman and his condition after, quite possibly, in my opinion, one of the scariest acts I think I've ever seen in racing, not just in NASCAR, but I think in racing in a very long time. Um, we are going to be showing the clip because of this update. Ryan Newman, and this was just a few hours ago, he's out of the hospital. And this is two days after this crash, coming to the finish line at the end of the day, 2500, him and Ryan Blaney fighting for a win when Newman gets T-boned upside down by Corey LaJoy. It, it was a crash, it was a very, very scary moment. I honestly, I thought the worst of him because he stopped right in front of me. I was, I believe, right past the pit lane area. Um, and he slid and stopped on fire right in front of me. So I was fearing the worst with my parents. And, uh, but yeah, he is, again, he is okay. He's out of the hospital, apparently. And it looks like from this five-second clip, him holding his girl's uh, two little daughters here with uh, his uh, ex-wife now, Christy Newman, filming him coming out of the hospital. And there's another photo with him smiling with his children. And another photo with him uh, and his good friend, Martin Trick Jr. and Trick's girlfriend, um... The, just him smiling, him being there with his kids and seeing those photos, it's it's just, uh, it warms my heart. It warms my heart. And uh, the interesting part about this was the fact that if you look at that five second clip, he's not only walking, but it doesn't look like he has any broken bones. And th now this could be, you know, we might uh, know further down the line, know if there are any injuries or maybe he might have rib injuries or something like that. I, I expected him to have some sort of head injury, per, most likely a concussion from that impact, maybe even rib injuries or some sort of bruising. It looked like from the way, uh, from the color that they use in the, the, uh, the filters that they use in the photo, you can see a lot of red marks all over Newman. It looks like they could be just bruising, but they had a filter so I make it look red instead of like maybe black and blue. Um, but I, I, I'm making too many assumptions, but regardless, Newman is okay and he is out of the hospital. hospital. Uh, but now the question is, is that where does NASCAR go from here? Now, one or two days ago, NASCAR did receive the cars of the number 6 and the number 32 car at their R&D center in North Carolina. Obviously, NASCAR is going to do an extensive report on this, and I, we're going to expect, most likely, hopefully before Talladega um, in April, we should expect a report on maybe on what caused the accident, or not what caused, but what uh, was the reason for Newman's injuries, or what part failed, or what bro part broke, or what happened, and also... What are the uh, what are the results going to come out of it? Are we going to see maybe some new safety uh, enhancement to the car? Are we going to see maybe a change of package? Maybe you know might see the car slow down, which uh, Newman he has been a huge advocate for <clears throat> is safety, and Newman he has been the one that either has a been upside down or b have had a car on top of him. Uh, you look back 2003 Daytona 500, uh, 2009 uh, Talladega in the fall. Uh, 2013 Talladega, he had a car on top of him. 2017 in practice, he was on. Uh, he had a Jimmy McMurray on top of him. Now this crash in Daytona. These are the ones that I can just remember. I'm pretty sure there's a couple more in there, but those are the ones I could just name right out of the bat. And with that, Newman he has always said that he doesn't like that these cars are going so fast, 200 plus miles an hour. They they can get upside down easily, and it's true. Ever since this style of racing package. We have seen a flip in all but I believe one race, and that was in the, the uh, 2019 Coke Zero 400. We had a uh, flip at uh, Talladega in 2019 with Brendan Gaughan, which it were, it wasn't similar, but that were, I, looking back to that, it reminds me a lot of Newman, how he just flipped, and he could have easily landed on his roof right in front of those cars. Luckily, he landed on his wheels, but that could have been a very, very scary moment, and so... Yeah, that's really what we're going to be waiting on is, number one, if Newman can even come back to the car. Because the fact that he was able to return so quickly, or not to return, to get out of the hospital so quickly in just two days after we thought, or at least I thought, we were fearing the worst, he's out of the hospital in just two days. So now the question is, is number one, if he's going to race back. Because... When you have an ex a, a wreck like that, it could be very traumatizing for some people. And Newman, he's getting up there in age. He's, I believe, 40 or 41 years old. I won't be surprised if, you know, 
if even if he wants to race or if not, he could just hang up the helmet and just say, hey, you know, I'm done. I've already had a good career. I want to spend time with my kids. Now, I wouldn't blame him for that, but, um, you know, if he's going to come back in the car, will he this year? Uh, he's not going to come back in the car pretty, you know, you know in just a couple weeks. Uh, he's probably going to be sore for those two or three weeks, sometimes maybe even a month from his injuries. So, with that being said, Newman, he's not going to be in the car this weekend at Las Vegas. So, who will replace him in those weeks? Well, for Vegas, is none other than the Melon Man, Ross Chastain. It was announced earlier today that he will replace the number six car, Ryan Newman, for this weekend at Las Vegas. Not sure on what the rest of the uh, schedule looks like for maybe, for example, at Auto Club or for Phoenix, what that looks like if he will be in the car. But for this weekend at Vegas, Chastain will be in the car. And I feel like that is a great pick. We know what Chastain can do in Met equipment. We've seen what Chassé can do in top equipment. Now, Roush Fenway, they're not top equipment, but Ross Chassé is a type of driver that can make a medium or mid-pack equipment, and he could put it up front. So I think this is a fantastic move for Roush Fenway, and it's also going to be another chance for Ross Chassé to show what he can do in the cup level. Uh, he raced in the 77 car at Daytona last weekend. Uh, while it was a Spire Motorsports car, it was financially backed up by Chip Ganassi. But that's Daytona. That's It's a roulette. At a track like Las Vegas, where it's going to be more on the driver, not much on luck, uh, it's going to be interesting what he can be able to do in the 6 car at Vegas. Now, obviously, uh, I was... Now, for those of you that haven't seen on uh, some of the other guys' social media or even on my social media page, uh, I was at the Daytona Speedway the whole entire weekend from Thursday to Monday, and it was so much fun. I was with uh, the other YouTube creators of Black Flags Matter, The Iceberg, Jake Baskinger, N2C4R, Slap, Cody H Gaming, Joey Stone. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm missing a couple. Oh, yeah, Danny B. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I believe that was it. Uh, I saw Brendan Littell, but I think only for one day, but... Uh, otherwise, it was just so awesome. It, it was it was one of the best weekends of my life. Be able to hang out with uh, other people that have the same interests that I have. Be able to be at the track, be in the garage, uh, just talking to people. I talked to Harris Lou, which one of the coolest guys, and he had those number three Dale Earnhardt, those Nike Jordans shoes. Which, by the way, Harris, if you if I don't care how much I have to pay, okay, I would love those shoes. I don't care if it's a thousand dollars. If a thousand dollars, I'll put a thousand. I'll give you a check for a thousand right on the table. I need those shoes. <laughs> but jokes aside, it was so much fun to be at the track. Uh, watching the truck race was, I think, the best race of the entire weekend. It was so much fun. The racing was so exciting. Pr practically all of Speed Weeks was exciting to watch. The duels were pretty good, at least from uh, from the from a stance perspective. When I was in the stands, it was pretty good. It was a lot better than last year, but it was really good. Trucks were fantastic. Even Xfinity was it was okay. It was pretty good. Um, there was a point in time where you started to get saw that freight train, which was not fun, but later on it started to get uh, intense and it made the racing exciting. Noah Gregson put a one of the funniest celebrations ever. You saw him up at the start finish line, literally trying to get either smelling the fire or trying to get more fire out of it. Um, in the in this cup race, even though what happened on that final lap, stay it was still a good race. There was a bit more freight training, a lot more than I expected it to be, but it was still a pretty good race. And to be honest, I was expecting a lot more crashes. I think there were only four crashes in that race, two big ones, but I expected I think three or four. So um, I, otherwise, awesome speed weeks. I had so much fun. Uh, thank you to the people at NASCAR and Matt. Uh, who helped put this YouTube thing together, specifically Matt, who uh, uh, was able to give me uh, a pass. I was not expecting that, specifically with the channel my size. I don't even have 3,000 subscribers, and he still gave me one. So thank you to Matt. Thank you to everyone at NASCAR. It was such an awesome event. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I really don't have much else to say. Um, it was a very short episode. I know it is. I've, I think it's maybe 10 minutes or so this episode is going to be. I uh, apologize for it being so short, but hopefully... Uh, Friday and Saturday, I can get a couple videos in for you guys. We'll try to get a special on Friday and then a uh, NASCAR and MDK Inside the Lines Prairie show for Vegas either on Saturday night or on Sunday morning. So look out for that. So, uh, yeah, uh, nothing much else to say, but I will be interested in what Ross Chastain can do and if this could open for more doors in the future. Uh, you know, depending on how Ross Chastain could do in the six car at Vegas, you know, who knows? We could see him in the six car 
future in the in the future if Ryan Newman's you know depending on his future right now we don't know what Ryan's future is um, his date re to return to the car is to be announced or to uh, TBD to be dated uh, so we don't know what the case is going with Ryan Newman is in his future in NASCAR but we do know for his future in life he is alive not only he's alive he is walking he is you know it, he looks what well, you know he's able to use all extremities and uh, yeah, seeing him smile with those two girls again, it made my day honestly. So um, yes, I'm very proud to see uh, uh, him be able to and his recovery already so quickly. I also got to give a massive props to NASCAR to the people that tried the AMR safety team uh, and Daytona for putting the safer bears and everything that uh, those that NASCAR and everyone else that did them working together to make the cars and the tracks as safe as possible. It saved Brian Newman's life. I mean, I, I think if you were to, not even, I don't think even in the Gen 5 car, I don't think Newman would have made out of that crash alive, or at least with significant injuries. I mean, again, look at, look, he's walking, doesn't look like there's anything wrong with him. Um, and But I believe even, even if in the Gen 5 car, I don't think he would have uh, been out of the hospital that early. Let's just say that. Maybe not, not alive, but I don't think he would have been out of the hospital that quickly, even in the Gen 5 car. So it really tells you um, how far NASCAR has come in terms of safety. Uh, so yes, that's going to conclude this episode of Inside the Lines. So going to leave a like and subscribe for more content. But until next time, my name is Jay Cross from NASCAR on MDK. And I'll see you guys in the next video.